Howdy folks, welcome back to the patch 9.3 test server with the mighty jingles and in this video we're going to be looking at those vehicles which already existed in World of Tanks but which have been changed, you know, nerfed <laughs> in patch 9.3. Starting off with Bert the Avenger, the FV304. Young Bert's been nerfed pretty hard in patch 9.3. Uh, and they're mostly to do with his mobility, his reload, and his aiming time. Um, pretty much across the board, stock suspension and upgraded suspension, stock 25 pounder gun and upgraded 4.5 inch howitzer, they've all been hit with the nerf ban. They're all some kind of soft stat changes. His top speed hasn't changed, he still does 72.4 kilometers per hour. His engine hasn't changed, he's still got the same 500 horsepower engine, but the tank doesn't handle off road as well as it used to um, and it turns very very badly indeed the combination of the uh, the nerf to the ground resistance on medium terrain for both sets of suspension combined with the nerf to the traverse speed usually by two degrees in the case of the upgraded suspension is down to 22 degrees per second traverse from 24 add those things together and you get significantly worse handling when you're trying to turn when this thing's off-road. That's the only real thing that I noticed about Bert. Um, as far as his firepower goes, well, yeah, they've nerfed the guns as well. I mean, this howitzer now has 4.4 rounds per minute, 13.5 uh, second reload up from a 12 second reload. Um, the aiming circle disperses 20% more after firing than it did, but you've got <laughs> more time waiting to reload the shot um, after you've fired anyway, so that, that's not such a massive problem. Um, the aiming time, 4.8 seconds, that's gone up as well. And yet, in practice, I, I didn't really notice that much of a difference with young Bertie here. The actual in-game performance of the gun is still as wildly unpredictable as it ever was. Um, hit a light tank in the side and do 161 damage. And in actual combat conditions I've not really noticed that much of a difference to the aiming time, um, even after moving the tank. But you know the gun keeps doing what the gun keeps doing. Hit a Yak Panther 2 in the side and do 45 damage. Then, of course, you smack IS-6s right in the face and do nearly 500 damage and set them on fire. <laughs> the gun hasn't really changed much in that respect. What has changed, of course, is this little tank's off-road performance and handling. As demonstrated when I'm scrambling to get some solid cover between myself and this Russian team killer in the Lerva after he's just taken a pot shot at a medium tank on our team because there was nothing else for him to shoot at. And it's this kind of close-range, low-speed, dogfighting and scrambling ability that the FB-304 has lost. And I don't actually have too much of a problem with that, because at the end of the day, Bert is artillery, and he shouldn't be able to dogfight with light tanks that bum-rush him. Quick mention of the T-67, the artist formerly known as the T-49. The T-49 is now the American Tier 8 light tank and this tier 5 tank destroyer is now known as the T67 and it's had some cosmetic changes as well. The second turret is no longer covered at the top, it's a completely open machine. Other than that, business as usual for the uh, T67, the artist formerly known as the T49. Which of course brings us on to the Hellcat and it, there's some bad bad news for Hellcat drivers. This thing has received a beating of epic proportions with the nerf hammer. The reverse speed used to be 20 kilometers per hour. Now it's 12 kilometers per hour and that's going to hurt. The ground resistance of the suspension has been nerfed across the board by at least 10% on soft and hard terrain and 17% on medium terrain, which means that it's going to be a lot more sluggish on all kinds of ground. The reload time of the 90mm gun has been increased by half a second, it's now an 8.5 second reload, and the size of the aiming circle, the dispersion of the aiming circle when you move the turret has been increased by 25%. 
All of which means that the tank is going to be more sluggish maneuvering on all kinds of terrain. It's not going to be able to get itself out of trouble nearly as quickly as it could before. And when it starts getting outflanked, it's going to miss the target a lot more. Which kind of means that you're going to really have to play the Hellcat more like your traditional tank destroyer. You can still use the speed, the speed hasn't been changed, the engine power hasn't been changed, it's still as fast in a straight line as it ever was. Um, so you can still use this thing to rush forward to an ambush position, you know, whatever ambush positions remain on the maps when more gaming have gotten through with removing all of the bushes, uh, and use this thing as a sniper. But if you start getting outflanked and the enemy start getting close, you're going to be in a lot more trouble in the Hellcat in patch 9.3 than you were in previous versions of World of Tanks. Now, if you thought the nerfs to the Hellcat were bad, you ain't seen nothing yet. The T-18 tank destroyer, which has long been considered one of the most overpowered machines in the game. This little thing is absolutely ridiculous. Down here at Tier 2. The package of nerfs that have been hammered into this little thing are just ridiculous. <laughs> um, quite possibly well deserved, but this thing is just not the same machine that it was prior to patch 9.3. Its health is down to 120 hit points. The traverse speed of the upgraded suspension, which used to be 30 degrees per second, is down to 22 degrees per second. The reload time for both the 2 pounder gun and the 75mm howitzer has been increased, as has the amount which the aiming circle disperses when you move the gun, again for both the 2 pounder and the 75mm. And just when you thought it couldn't get any worse, the ground resistance for the suspension has been nerfed by 46% <laughs> on solid ground, 40% uh, on medium ground, and 12% on soft ground. So, yeah. And while I am sad to see the changes to the T18, because it's the puppy kicking machine of choice, I really can't say I'm sorry to see this thing get nerfed, because this is a tier 2 machine. That, when you just start playing World of Tanks, and you start running into these things, within hours of playing, you stand no chance. <laughs> None whatsoever. This is a dedicated puppy kicking machine. Um, and as such, the fact that this thing is being made, I mean it's still going to slaughter newbies, but it's not going to slaughter them with quite such impunity as it did before. Now they do actually stand a chance against the thing. If they can just get around it, which shouldn't be too difficult, given the nerfs to the thing's mobility and its ability to hit stuff when it's turning at close range. So I can't really say I'm sorry to see the changes that have been inflicted on the T-18 tank destroyer. They haven't touched the Panzer IIJ though. <laughs> it's still just as overpowered as ever. Then of course there's the Chaffee, um, Tier 5 American light tank, which was the Tier 5 American light tank and is still the American Tier 5 light tank, but it's not really the Chaffee that we all know and love anymore. The Chaffee that we all know and love is now the T-37 at Tier 6. This thing, well they call it a Chaffee, but it's not the Chaffee that we're all used to. There's been a massive list of changes applied to the M24 Chaffee at Tier 5. Uh, first and foremost, it doesn't cost you an arm and leg to research anymore. Which is a kind of good news, bad news situation. Where is it? That's tier 6, I'm looking at the wrong tier. There it is, the Chaffee. Now, it's only 12,480 XP to research, and will cost you 405,000 credits. Those of us who already have the Chaffee, don't get all of the XP that we sank into it refunded. Which is bizarre. Remember when they uh, removed the 1200 horsepower engines from all of the German tanks? Those of us who'd spent all that experience researching those engines got that experience given back to us in the form of free XP. Well, that doesn't seem to be happening if you've unlocked the Chaffee and paid, I can't remember, something like 64,000 XP for this thing. It's just gone. So, there's that. The package of changes introduced for the Chaffee, and uh, this is around about my 7th or 8th time at summarising this because I ended up talking for like 10 minutes purely about the Chaffee alone. <laughs> but 
the budget version is what they have done to the chaffee is they have well it, for a start it's no longer going up against tier 10s it's it's not getting that kind of matchmaking anymore it doesn't need to that's what the t37 the m41 and the t49 are for this is now a standard tier 5 light tank just like the elc amx so it didn't need to have as much health as it used to it's down to 440 hit points the chaffee's main problem was that it wasn't as fast as the other tier 5 light tanks well that problem has definitely been addressed it'll now do 77.2 kilometers per hour top speed it's incredibly maneuverable it turns at 42 degrees per second the turret turns at 44 degrees per second all of which suggests that it is still top of the roost when it comes to close range dogfighting with wounded heavies and tank destroyers in the closing stages of a match except that isn't quite the case because they've taken away that top tier scout gun performance from it as well to summarise the changes that have been done to the Chaffee in the fighting department, well, they've removed the T91 76mm gun, and instead you've got a selection of two fairly underwhelming 75mm guns, which, it has to be said, are perfectly adequate for a tier 5 light tank that isn't going to have to get itself into tier 10 games. Good rate of fire, adequate penetration, considering the role of the tank, uh, 110 damage which mounts up with the 17.14 rounds per minute rate of fire decent accuracy 0.36 pretty good 1.9 second aiming time but the way they have uh, hampered the tanks fighting performance is in well it's to do with dispersion of the aiming circle when moving the turret when on the move and when turning the tank all the sort of things that you do when you're circle strafing wounded T-34s or lovers towards the closing stages of a match. When you're doing the things that the Chaffee um, has always been very, very good at. The size of your aiming circle is going to be roughly the, state of the, uh, the size of the state of Nebraska when you're doing things like moving, turning the tank and turning the turret. The dispersion of the aiming circle when the vehicle is mobile has been nerfed massively. So what we have with the new tier 5 chaffee is a tank that is vastly more mobile than it was before but not as good as dogfighting as it was before m5 stewart uh, in a nutshell top speed increased maneuverability slightly reduced off-road performance buffed 75 millimeter howitzer removed 37 millimeter auto cannon added the T-57 Heavy has been nerfed. The dispersal of the aiming circle while the tank is moving increased by 25%. The dispersal of the aiming circle while the tank is turning increased by 25%. The dispersal of the aiming circle when the tank is moving the turret increased by 29%. And the aiming time of the 120mm autoloader increased to 2.9 seconds. The American T-92 Tier 10 artillery has received nothing but buffs. They have reduced the amount of dispersion on the aiming circle after moving the tank, after turning the tank, and after turning the gun to narrow down your target solution on whatever it is you're about to introduce to a world of pain. They've also increased the mobility of the tank on all kinds of terrain with nothing but buffs to the ground resistance of the suspension on hard, soft and medium ground. So that's great news for T92 drivers. Incidentally, while we're on the subject of American artillery, if you have a look at the tech tree, because I know a couple of people are undoubtedly going to be saying, well if the M41 is now a tier 7 light tank, what happened to the M41 tier 5 artillery? Well, specifically to avoid confusion between the two, the Tier 5 American M41 artillery is now called the M41 HMC. So it is that. The IS at Tier 7 has also received um, some unusual buffs, and it's to do with the 100mm D10T gun. In both turrets available for the IS, the stock IS85 turret and the upgraded IS122 turret, the 100mm D10T gun has received a very, very welcome package of buffs. The rate of fire has improved to 7.89 rounds per minute. 
the accuracy has gone from 0.42 down to 0.38 and the aiming time has been reduced from 2.9 to 2.7 seconds. That's on the stock turret and the upgraded turret on the OIS. Then of course we come to the one that's probably got most of you sitting on the edge of your seats waiting with anticipation to find out what the hell has happened to your KV-1S. Well, it's still in the game, except now it's a tier 5 heavy tank. And there it is, fully upgraded. And a lot of people were saying, well hang on a minute, <laughs> I'm Manitan Bitter, if that thing is the tier 5 Soviet heavy tank, what's happened to my KV-1? Oh god, Wargaming, don't take my KV-1 away! Relax, relax, the KV-1 is still in the game, it hasn't changed at all. There it is. I'll show you where they all fit into the tech tree in a moment, but there are now two tier 5 Russian heavy tanks, the KV-1 and the KV-1S. So what's happened at tier 6? Well, tier 6, there's a new tank, the KV-85. And it still has a 122mm gun. And I know what you're all thinking. For God's sake, Wargaming, that was the whole point. That's what made the KV-1S so bloody overpowered. At tier 6, that 122mm gun with a 390 average damage and 175mm penetration. And it still has 175mm of penetration and it still does 390 average damage. For God's sake, Wargaming, what are you doing? Well, this gun is terrible. <laughs> it, is, it is incredibly bad. Um, there it is. The D25T on the KV-1S at tier 6. Sorry, on the KV-85 at tier 6 fires three shots per minute it's once every 20 seconds it still has the 175 penetration and the 390 damage but the accuracy is 0 0.5 <laughs> this thing couldn't hit the side of a bomb from the inside and it only gets to do it three times a minute 3.6 second aiming time this is a terrible terrible gun but people are still going to use it because there's a certain attraction to being able to i mean you know get this thing in a close range top tier tank tier six match city map <laughs> it doesn't matter if you have 0 0.5 accuracy get close enough you're not going to miss um it doesn't matter if you have a 3.6 second aiming time bury the gun barrel in the side of the tank that you're attacking and just pull the trigger i mean there are still people who are going to use it in that way but it's, it's, it, there is a far better gun available on the KV-85. And strangely, despite the fact that it's called the KV-85, it's not an 85mm gun. It's this 100mm S34. Get a load of that. 7.89 rounds per minute. 170 penetration, which is still not bad for tier 6. 250 average damage, not as much as the 390. 0.38 accuracy and a 2.7 second aiming time. That's not bad at all. Compare it to the 120mm gun. Sorry, the 122mm gun. Look at that. <laughs> it's more than double the rate of fire for more than half of the damage. Way better DPM. Uh, the penetration, there's only 5mm difference. The difference in accuracy is. <laughs> It's absolutely comical. 0 0.5 versus 0 0.38. Um, I mean, that 0 0.38, for a tier 6 Russian, that's not bad accuracy. And 2.7, it's almost, it's, almost, it's almost the second faster aiming. It's just, there's no choice. Not for me, anyway. I mean, I appreciate that just opening up with that 122mm gun is going to be as fun as it ever was. But you're not going to get to do it as often, and you're going to miss more. For me, the 100mm gun is the way to go on the KV-85. It's just a better gun in, in practically, in every respect that matters, it's a better gun. It's not going to stop people using the 122 though, <laughs> because people love to derp. And there's nothing wrong with that. I mean, I dare say it's still going to work, it's just not going to work as often, and you're going to miss a hell of a lot more. So, the second question on everybody's lips is, how do you actually go about getting a KV-85 or the KV-1S. Well, if you currently have a KV-1S fully upgraded sitting in your garage, then you will have a KV-85 fully upgraded sitting in your, bar um, in your garage when patch 9.3 goes live. 
you will not have the tier 5 KV-1S, but it will be researched in the tech tree. You'll just have to spend money on it. Any crew, any camouflage, any decals, any equipment that you had on the KV-1S will magically appear on the KV-85. Now, how this all fits into the Soviet tech tree is um, unusual. The T-28 at Tier 4 leads to the KV-1. Currently, the KV-1 leads to the KV-1S, the T-150 and the KV-2 at Tier 6. Well, it doesn't lead to the KV-85 at Tier 6. Now, in order to get the KV-85, after patch 9.3, if you don't already have the KV-1S researched, in order to get there, you have to go via the KV-1 sideways, unlock the KV-1S, and then from the KV-1S at Tier 5, progress onto the KV-85. So the KV-85 sits in a very, very weird spot in the Soviet tech tree. It, it's, it's right in the middle of nowhere. The only way to get to it is via the new KV-1S Tier 5 heavy tank, which is unlocked sideways from the KV-1 Tier 5 heavy tank. So in effect, you have to research two Tier 5 heavy tanks in order to get the Tier 6 KV-85. And what of the new KV-1S here at Tier 5? It's, um, well, it's not the tank it was when it was at Tier 6, not by any stretch of the imagination, but it, that doesn't mean it's a bad tank. Um, it's a 44-ton machine with a 600 horsepower engine, fully upgraded. It will do 43 kilometers per hour, and I have had this thing exceed 53 kilometers per hour when going downhill. It's quick. It's one of the faster of the heavy tanks in World of Tanks. Gun-wise, you've got the 122mm howitzer. Oh, that's interesting. I'm used to seeing the U11 howitzer on these uh, sort of derpy mid-tier Russian heavies. Um, that's just a tube sticking out of the front of the turret. This one's actually got a muzzle brake on it, so... Okay, well, that's new. <laughs> um, the stock 76mm ZIS-5 gun. And 85mm S31. And that's not a bad gun. Um, it's, I suppose, you know, comparisons are going to be drawn with the KV-1. Which has the 85mm F30. And there's not a massive amount of difference between the two guns. Um, same rate of fire, they're both 85mm. The penetration, there's only 1mm in it. The same damage, same accuracy. Um, it aims faster. KV-1S's gun aims slightly faster, 2.5 seconds, well not slightly faster, actually quite significantly faster, 2.5 seconds on the KV-1S, 2.9 seconds on the KV-1, so you lose 1mm of penetration but you get 0.4 second faster aiming time. That's pretty much the difference between the KV-1 and the KV-1S, they're, they're very very similar tanks. Um, let's have a look, hull armour, turret armour, yeah, there's the difference. The KV-1 is the more heavily armoured but less mobile of the Tier 5 Russian heavies, and the KV-1S is the less heavily armoured but with slightly better gun performance and much, much better mobility. So that's the KV-1S, now at Tier 5 as a Russian heavy tank. Just time before we finish the video to mention another massively significant change, and it's to do with tanks that have transmissions in the front of the vehicle. Pretty much every German vehicle from Tier 7 up, as well as the Object 263, the T-28 Tank Destroyer, the Type 61, STA-1 and FP-215B183 will no longer have their engines set on fire when they take damaging hits to their transmission. And finally, the durability of the suspension of every existing light tank in the game, Tier 5 or higher, has been buffed, which means it's going to be significantly harder to immobilise these little buggers by shooting their tracks off. Coming up in future videos, we're going to be taking a look at the new light tanks that have been introduced in the game, such as the Spurpanzer, or the Spy Panzer, as I like to call it, the Walker Bulldog, the T-49, the LTTB, the T-54 Lightweight, and the T-37. As always, folks, take care on that battlefield, and I'll catch you next time.